In this video, we'll show you how to initialize a parallel port. The port F, parallel port, has a number of registers. The data register, which will perform input-output, the direction, which will tell us whether it's an input or output, and many others. And you can see in this program here that there is a mapping between the name of the register and its address in the memory map. All the I.O. devices also have a clock, and we're going to have to turn on the clock. Let me illustrate what John just said. Um, there is, for every port, in this case port F, there are relevant registers. The registers of interest to us are, uh, there is a direction register, uh, and the direction register, like all registers that we're going to be looking at, is, uh, is at a specific location. The location happens to be uh, from the program that we saw. The location happens to be 4002-5400. And this is a a register with many fields in it, but the fields of, are in, of interest to us because port F has has five pins of that we will be working with. So the five pins are configured on pins on bits four, three, two, one, and zero. So these are the five pins that we can program. Now, let's understand how a direction register works. So we see that um, we see that uh, pins can be reconfigured. That is, pins are either input or output. Does that mean we could have some pins as input and some pins as output? That is correct. We, oh. And in fact, we can have the same pin in, on one system be input, on a different system it could be output. That is up to the programmer to decide whether they want to make a pin be an input or an output. So let's see how we can do that. In the case of port F, these pins are tied to the hardware on the launch pad. Specifically, pin 4 and pin 0 are switches which are input and pin 3, 2 and 1 are LEDs which are output. So what are we going to put in there? So we have to distinguish between a pin being either a input or an output. So if I want to use a particular pin and I want to call it an input, I have to make sure that the bit I write to in the direction register has to be a zero for input, zero for input, if I want to use both these switches. And if I want to use an output, I have to have a different, different code for it and I use one for output. Now, what we also see is that there are two other registers. More the enable register, which is the DEN register, which happens to have an address which is 0x4002554. And it's also a register with many bits in it, a memory location with many bits in it. And we will C focus on the bits of interest to us again 4 3 2 1 and 0 and if I want to enable these so in our in our program we might just be using one switch and one LED if that is the case I'm only going to turn on the ones of interest to me in this program um, the, the way we're using the logic, we want to turn all of them on and we turn them all on or enable them by writing a 1 to them. Okay. Now that we've seen how the I.O. registers work, let's look at the software which we can use to initialize the port. 
Each device has a separate clock that can be turned on. And so we're going to set bit 5 in this clock register to enable the clock for port F. It takes 3 to 5 cycles for the clock to stabilize, so we'll put in a dummy delay loop just to make sure the clock is stable before we use it. There are two pins on the microcontroller that require unlocking, port F bit 0 and port D bit 7. To unlock, we'll write this magic number into the lock register. And after unlocked, we can then allow changes to all five bits of port F. We're not using the analog mode, so we'll turn it off. And the alternate function mode has two registers, this one and that one. In this particular example, we're using the general purpose I.O. and not alternative function, so we will set the P control and the AF select to zero. We saw Dr. Yarabali explain direction register, and this is the pattern that he selected. Zero, one, 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 zero for the five bits of the port F direction register. The hardware on the launch pad needs an internal pull-up. And so we'll enable the internal pull-up by setting the port F bit 4 and port F bit 0 pull-up resistors on. And lastly, we saw the data enable register, and in this case, we enabled all five bits. So, um, okay, John, it seems like we are doing a lot more than we need to. Okay, in this uh, program, we're only using two two pins, but we're changing a lot of things. I'll show you later how it's done right. <laughs>